Kira was my dream and has been my dream for many years, but without CVS I think it would still be a dream. They've supported me, they've supported my organisation and they've been doing that a long time. We give our residents confidence to build and to go forward and that's exactly what they did for us. They gave us confidence that we could do it. York CBS has an amazing amount of respect within this city. It's a support arm. It's where I go to lean on. <laughs> it's a hub, it's a centre in York where voluntary organisations and charities can come together and learn from each other. In a phrase, it, it's a rock of stability in ever-changing times. We do empower people to sort of take forward their ideas and try just to support them with all that stuff that sits in the background so that can develop their ideas and hopefully make a difference. I mean, it's a unique organisation. Bringing people together. How long ago was it when you first sort of opened the doors here? We came and looked at it in September 1999 and we moved in on the 10th of December 1999. It was absolutely extraordinary that I finally knocked on the door of Paul Wordsworth's house in York on the day that they were going for planning permission. They got a little bit of money from central government, but they had no one to run it. My name's Jeremy Jones, I'm Chief Executive of Arclight, which is a York-based charity working with either those who are ex-rough sleepers or those who are at risk of rough sleeping in the city. When we first started, we knew that there were 35 to 40 people sleeping on the streets. And you would have thought that to provide 35 to 40 beds was the solution, but it wasn't. The solution was to find out why they were on the streets and why they were going back onto the streets. At the beginning, with the money we had and with the resources we had, the best that we could do would be to provide a roof, some warm food, uh, some comfort and some good chat. It was a redundant Victorian railway building. It certainly required a bit of vision to see how it could turn into a night shelter. I had a relationship breakdown in January this year. I hit the drugs, the alcohol, got myself into a pretty bad way. Went to Lifeline, they got me in touch with the Salvation Army, and then the Salvation Army referred me to the Arkwright Centre. Everything is on the up. If it wasn't for our fight, I'd either be in prison or dead. It's as simple as that. My confidence, self-esteem, it's all gone. I'm here on the up and hopefully I'll get work opportunities, you know, a place of my own. I want a better life for myself. It's amazing. And I'm not just saying that it has massively changed my life. I think it's very important that a city such as York, which is one that has a very strong sort of voluntary movement feel anyway, has this organisation that can pull everything together. I came to York having known nothing about working with the homeless except as a volunteer, so where should I go first? An organisation that supports volunteers. It was refreshing for me to know that there was somewhere where I could go where they understood what volunteering was all about. They knew who all the voluntary organisations were, and they were able to give me the opportunity of meeting people who were thinking in the same way as I thought. Knowing that there is this stable organisation that one can go to for advice, for support. Whatever you want to find out about running a charity, they know. So if you've got any doubts at all about how you can raise money, how you set up the constitution of a charity, where you can go and find a building, who you should speak to in York, they're the go-to organisation.
Kira is the only independent women's project in New York. There's no labels, no attachment. How it first developed was that I felt there was a great need for a place where women were who they were without having to have any label. We don't do specialist work. We're not trained to do intervention with drugs or alcohol or domestic violence or anything like that. We're basically the support mechanism. So if a woman has been going through or is going through any intervention, then we look upon our role as supporting them and enabling them to move on with their life and make that change that they need to do. I had been to the mental health services in York and they couldn't provide for my needs. They sent me a letter suggesting that I contact Kira. I was in an isolated space. I knew I didn't want to continue like that. When I come through the door, really was anxious, really nervous. But everybody was welcoming and, and smiling and they all looked comfortable. It's just talking about your life, your experiences, just being in a nice, safe environment. Maybe counselling they want, stress management. We find that the ladies just keep coming back. There'd be quite a lot of ladies that maybe have had addiction problems low self-esteem. That can happen through you know, mental illness, depression, pressures of work, family. Kira is a sanctuary, I'd say. The change as they come through Kira and stay with us for drop-ins is, is just so rewarding. If the ladies can fly and free and build a new life, it really is, you know, you can see it happening every week. 80% of our women actually come as referrals and that's sort of been built up with the CVS's help and support. CVS enabled us to sort of set up the charity, took us through all the whole process, helped us with finding trustees, talking about the rules of a trustee, helped us the finances and how best to do that. They've been an incredibly good good support mechanism. I wouldn't be sat here if it hadn't been for CVS. My name's Andy White. My job is Administrator and Volunteer Coordinator here at the hospital for the Friends of York Hospitals who provide hospital volunteers. We also fundraise for specialist equipment and services here at the hospital. We provide a lot of volunteers, more than 100 at any one time. It's an organisation that's been around more than 60 years and it's been providing volunteers all that time. I've been working in organising adult education courses. I got made redundant. I didn't know what to do. And at that stage I sort of thought, OK, so I've got to try something new. Turned up at CVS and said, well, this is me, this is what I've done. They found me a place in Volunteering York, matching volunteers with suitable volunteering opportunities. Straight away, I was given quite a lot of responsibility, a lot of support as well from the CVS staff, decent training, and straight away I was helping people. I was finding out about the voluntary sector in York, feeling more connected to the place I lived in. The current job that I've got with Friends of York Hospitals, they were mainly interested in the work that I was doing, you know, in the voluntary sector. And sometimes you don't know what's around the corner. When I sort of showed up at, at CVS and, and just sort of offered to help, I didn't really know what was coming. One of the good things about being a volunteer is that the people that you see day to day tend to have a kind of positive mindset. They're well motivated, they're looking to make a difference. About 10 years ago, I worked for about a year with a stroke patient, working for the Stroke Association. It was a woman about my age, and she'd had a very severe stroke, couldn't really speak, could hardly walk, and I really enjoyed working with her. You know, from my point of view, doing something interesting, which had the additional effect of helping somebody else. Then, about two years ago, I was walking through York Hospital and I saw a sign up talking about a reading service and working with stroke patients. And I just thought, well, what a wonderful opportunity. That's how I came to be working here. When I used to see like newspapers being delivered or the library service, I just thought that was all part of the thing that happened in a hospital. You know, if Friends of York Hospital didn't do that, then patients wouldn't get newspapers, they wouldn't get library books, they wouldn't get maybe someone to come and chat with them. It's given me a much broader view of life, I suppose. If you're thinking about volunteering, do it. Just give it a try. I've been directed to training. I've had one-to-one -one advice. Once you've been with the CVS, it doesn't mean they stop supporting you.
They helped us get started, which was fantastic. They helped us flourish, and, and that was great. And they've helped me finish. Every idea needs to have infrastructure that sits behind it, but that makes the organisation viable. It means that they can grow and develop. We could come somewhere where we could say, well, we don't know what we're doing. And they say, we'll help you figure out what you're trying to do and how you're going to get there. I think the main drive for CBF over the next 75 years would be to ensure that the voluntary sector gets the support it needs and that their voices are heard. With them behind you, you'll succeed.